What's up guys, it's Rusty here. I am doing an updated pricing video for $30 budget vintage. I'm going to go ahead and make the assumption that you know what $30 budget vintage is and you're interested in some capacity, so I'm not going to talk about why it's my favorite format. I'm only going to talk about pricing and what's changed from the last video. Um, so not a lot has changed since the last video. There's a minor update. I think in the last video I said that we price off TCG market low. That is not correct. We never used TCG market low. I just misspoke and did not fix it. Um, our pricing is pulled from TCG market mid. Um, the best way to price is on moxfield.com. Um, moxfield.com. This is the deck builder that we use uh, because it can do TCG player pricing. Um, so note, it's 2903 TCG player. If I'm on Card Kingdom, it's like 52. So be careful. Make sure your price settings are correct. Uh, you can do that by going to account settings, pricing and affiliates, set it to TCG player. Um, it, that is an account wide setting. So um, if you open up a Moxfield list and you're not logged into your account, you're going to see it on, I think, default Card Kingdom pricing, which is not correct. Um, go ahead and just make sure you set it to TCG player. The last thing that I want is for you to roll up to an online event or an in-person event and find out that your deck's been priced wrong. That's terrible. Um, so TCG market, build your deck on Moxfield. That is just the easiest way. Uh, just build on Moxfield. We're not associated with them. They just have the best deck building engine and they pull pricing that we want to see. Um, also, if you go in advanced here, um, you can change how you lay out your deck. I recommend you play with it and figure out what you like. Some people like visual stacks and stuff like that. Those people are sociopaths. I like text or condensed text. Um, but the important thing to see here is that include extra data, price, and mana cost. Price is not a default setting. Uh, I personally always want to see price because I want to understand that I'm spending $8 on Baleful Strixes. That's important information, so go ahead and toggle that on on your uh, decks. Set that to your default. Another thing I want to talk about is lands, okay? Um, first thing to note, and this is not land specifics, when it shows you a price over here, uh, that price is not for one card. That price is for a price all the total number of cards in the stack, right? So $6 is for three Baleful Strixes, $4 is for two Baleful Strixes. It's not the individual price, it's the price of a Baleful Strix times the number of Baleful Strixes I have. One Sudden Edict is nine cents. If I go up to three of them, it'll be 27 cents, right? That all makes sense. Just keep in mind, you're not seeing the price of an individual card there, you're seeing the total of the number of cards you have. And then same mana value too, I'm spending 1281. Uh, there's a lot of powerful filtering in Moxfield that you can change if you want to see it by like uh, mana value first or type first followed by mana value. Uh, they're both useful, I think it depends. I usually use, uh, I don't need to talk about it, we're going to make this video short. Um, next thing, uh, basic lands. So my lands are $24, including my Salendi Visions. Don't worry about that. It doesn't really matter. Um, $1.84 for my lands. Now, my islands represent $0.30, cents, right? Um, if I were to remove any amount of islands, so look, I'm at $29.03 down here on the bottom. If I remove one, two, three islands, it doesn't change my price down here, and that's what we care about. Moxfield has a site-wide setting to not price basic lands that cost less than one dollar. If I change the version of my... If I change the... How do you swap the version? If I change the version of my island to uh, this Middle Earth nonsense island, um, it's $59, and that is added to my total price. The reason it does that is because each island is above $1, so it's added to the price of the deck. It'll default to an island that is free, probably, as long as you're on an... As long as you're on a basic land that's sub $1, it's not going to count here. Now, that's a good thing, generally, but... You have to price snow basics in your deck, right? If you're playing Arkham's Astrolabe, if you're playing Dead of Winter, you have to pay the price for your snow-covered islands and forests, right? Uh, the issue we run into is that... And first, let me justify that. The reason snow-covered basics have a price associated is because if they didn't, every deck would start with four Arkham's Astrolabe. 
Mana is a little bit interesting and complicated in this format, and you have to make very real trade-offs, which you don't in a lot of other formats. Um, Snow is a good way to fix a multicolored mana base using Arkham's Astrolabe, but there's a downside. Um, so, the way we handle that, it's not ideal, it's a little bit clunky, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, you have to manually price up your snow basics, and you have to leave room in your budget. So if I have five snow-covered forests in my deck, add f four, um, 275 is how much I'm paying for them. So instead of having a $30 deck, you would have to have uh, a $30 deck minus 275 for snow-covered forests. Uh, usually on our deck list submissions, I have a checkbox that's like, are you playing snow covered basics? And the reason I do that is so I can manually check your deck uh, when you submit it to something. Now, for those of you who are new to the format and interested in starting it at your own LGS, we have a Google Drive form that we use for deck list submissions. Um, we do that to collect data for our tournament reports tab and also to check prices and make sure everyone's like within the realm of make sure everyone's complying with the price, right? Um, if anyone needs that, let me know. I'll link that to you, and you can use that. But it's important to have that, and it's important to make sure people are pricing their snow basics properly, because if they don't, it's a big advantage. Uh, notably, all of my non-basics are priced appropriately. See how I'm at 2903 right now? If I remove one choked estuary, I go into 2886. So it's pricing non-basics properly. So just keep in mind, you have to pay for snow basics. On the note of other things that you have to pay for, you have to pay for attractions and stickers. Um, the last video that I made about pricing did not say you had to pay for stickers and attractions. Um, there are rules for stickers and attractions. You have to have a minimum of 10 of them in your deck if you're using them. And these cards um, originally were not priced. My thought process and the thought process of those that we discussed with was that they're not real cards, so who cares what the price is. And they're like tokens, right? We're not going to price your tokens. And at the time, we couldn't add them to Moxfield, so it was complicated. And there wasn't sufficient price data to like have a supply and demand and have the better ones be priced higher. Since then, Moxfield has added stickers and um, attractions to their pricing. And notably, um, so that's easy from a logistics perspective. Additionally, um, there are indicators that the better versions of these have higher prices, which indicate supply and demand, which indicate we should price them. Um, as far as sticker sheets, the one that normally matters is Blank Goblin. I don't know if this will... So Blank Goblin is one that makes mana. It's like the Seething Song Goblin, based on the number of vowels. Um, the sticker sheet that has six vowels in it is the most expensive sticker sheet, indicating it's got the highest demand. So with that in mind, if you want to play stickers in your deck, which usually means you're playing Mind Goblin or Blank Goblin, you have to have ten sticker sheets, and you have to include them in your price. So keep that in mind. We didn't say that in the previous pricing video. It, that was a minor update, and we do that now. Same for attractions. Notably on attractions, um, there are four different versions of each of them. I'm not going to explain the rules to you, but the num the lights at the bottom, the right now four and six are lit up on this roller coaster. If you switch versions, there's a version that has two and six, three and six, four and six, uh, five and six all lit up, right? They are actually different prices, 12 cents, 15 cents, 16 cents. You have to select those, and the price has to update. I'm sorry, but if you're playing Attractions, and I've played, I, I, I played Blue Black Attractions, I actually think it's a very viable deck. I think that Blue Black Luris Attractions is a fine deck to play. But you have to admit, if you're playing Attractions, you're kind of a psycho, and you are introducing some additional nonsense to the game. You have to price them, so select your versions. That's the rule. Um, so to recap... Attractions, stickers, snow basics, all priced. Um, other than that, pricing is done on TCG Market through Moxfield. Um, this will automatically update. If you go to more here, there's an update to cheapest setting. Um, this is kind of like shaking your TCG player cart. I'm at 29.03 right now. Let's shake it. Uh, sometimes it changes, sometimes it doesn't. It never, I've never seen it take this long. Um, 
but use that to make sure that just press that button every once in a while to make sure it's pulling the cheapest versions uh it's the same it's fine uh but do that every once in a while and make sure you're correct sideboard is included in pricing um as far as events so when we have a weekly event like today is saturday we had an eight person local it was five dollar buy-in store credit payout at mavericks um we didn't even submit deck lists truthfully uh, i gotta be honest we trust our community we trust people are not like pulling over a fast one on us by registering a 31 dollar deck or a 60 dollar deck it just it doesn't happen um if you're worried go ahead and have everyone select their submit their deck lists and do deck techs or deck checks rather um, but we don't worry about it when we do our monday night leagues which are slightly higher stakes we usually have like 16 to 25 people there um, and we pay out pretty good amounts of prize support at the end uh the winner of the last league got 250 dollars store credit so kind of big uh we submit the deck lists through Google Forms to the TO, and then those get posted. So if we were to look at someone's deck list and it was $35, we would have questions. You know what I mean? Um, it's not uncommon to go back through the tournament results tab and see decks that are over by a dollar or $3 because prices fluctuate. Don't worry about that. And then if we have a big event, like we had a 33-person win at Tiger back in March, um, we will allow people to submit their decks with a screenshot for a certain window, usually something like three days to two weeks prior to the event. And once you submit your list, you're good. You're locked in. We'll review it when you submit it, as well as seeing the screenshot, right? You would just use Google Snipping Tool, or use the Snipping Tool here, right? Take a snip, get your deck list, get the date, and get the price, and you would submit this. And once you do that, you're locked in. That means that if my um, mystical teachings were to spike to $7 each, um, I've already locked in my price. You're going to be good for that event. Um, and I understand that it's kind of a pain to price these things, but this is how we handle it for small and big events. Uh, that's how we do pricing, and in the interest of keeping this video short, I'm going to sign off. This is Rusty with $30 Budget Vintage. Thank you for watching. One last thing, check out the article on Channel Fireball that our own servo token just wrote. Um, I'll drop a link down below. And if you want to join in and talk uh, about what we're up to, join our Discord. We run spell table events roughly every two weeks, sometimes a little bit more because, you know, I get busy. And if you have any questions about fostering your own community and getting this format started in your own area, talk to us. We're happy to help. All right, thanks for tuning in. This is your pricing guide.